Welcome to the Old Time Radio Westerns. I'm your host, Andrew Rines, and I'm excited to bring you another episode absolutely free. This episode is one of many released every month, totaling over 80 episodes so far. Each one is meticulously digitally restored and stored in the cloud for your convenience, a process that incurs costs. To help cover these expenses, you might hear some advertisements throughout the episode. While we do retain the original commercials for historical authenticity, you may also encounter modern ads, which help keep the lights on. If you prefer an ad-free experience, we offer a couple options. You can listen to the episodes on YouTube. You can also support us by becoming a patron on our Patreon page. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash donate. Again, otrwesterns.com slash donate. I do want to emphasize that we are committed to providing this content to you for free, but also we have to be transparent about the financial realities to bringing this to you. Now, let's get into this episode. This episode is going to be The Lone Ranger. Original air date is September 22nd, 1947, and the title is Law Girl. Hope you enjoy. Every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come, Silver! Let's go, big I am Silver! Rain fell steadily beyond the mouth of the cave in which the Lone Ranger and Tonto had sought shelter for the night. It was a large cave facing the Rio Grande about a quarter of a mile away. The horses, as well as the men, had found shelter there. Scout and Silver stood near the rear wall while the masked man and his Indian companion sat on blankets close to a small campfire. They were just about to turn in for the night when gunshots rang out above the rain. Hey, Silver. Hello, did you hear that? Ah, uh, me hear him. Gunshots. Somewhere between here and the river. Can't see a thing out there. Uh, plenty dark. I'm going out to see what that shooting is all about. Uh, here. Here, gun belt. Oh, thanks. Uh, me go? No, stay here with the horses. I'm going on foot. Keep the campfire burning so I can find my way back. Uh. The masked man plunged into the rain. His long strides carried him over the soggy ground, and then he stopped abruptly. 
From somewhere in the gloom ahead, there came the sound of running feet. The labored breathing of a person on the verge of exhaustion. Here, just a minute. Oh, oh. I heard shooting. Oh, let my arm go. Let me go, I tell you. Please. Oh. Be careful. Oh, you... You threw me. Oh, you lost your balance and you broke away. You better let me help you out of that mud hole. There, now. Take it easy. I'm all right. Darn it, I... Are you sure you're not hurt? Leave me alone. There's a warm fire and shoulder within 20 yards of here. Let me help you. Yes, all that gooey mud. Here, look right through those trees. You can see my campfire. What? Come on now. You don't talk like one of the Bascom gang. Who are you? I'm not one of the Bascom gang. Oh, you must be cold. I, I'm half frozen. Well, it's warm in the cave. Make you some hot tea or coffee. We? Oui? My friends are waiting beside the fire. What? Why, he's... He's an Indian. Please don't be afraid. Plenty of mud. Plenty wet. Yes, get some water heated, Toto. This girl can use a cup of tea. Ah, let me get it. Here, pull this blanket over your shoulders. Oh, you... Your mask. Are you sure you didn't hurt yourself when you fell? I told you I didn't. I... Oh, look at me. I'd rather have had some bruises on hard ground than all this mud. <laughs> if you'll hold out your hands, I'll rinse them with water from this canteen. That might help. Uh, were those shots fired at you? Look here, stranger... I don't see that it's any of your business. I don't know who you are, and I have work to do. I... Work? That's what I said. Now, me got water on fire. He be ready plenty quick now. But I'm not staying here. I have... Oh, where are you? Quiet. Let me listen. Do you hear anyone? No. I... I guess it is all right, then. They didn't come after me. Thanks for giving me the chance to catch my breath, stranger. Now I've got to go. You're a mysterious girl. And your mask. It doesn't matter. Here's your blanket. Thanks for the use of the fire. Well, why not stay until the rain stops? I can't get any wetter than I am. You can get a lot drier. Sit down until that mud dries and most of it will brush off. No, I'm leaving, mister. And don't try to stop me because I'm armed. Yes, I know you are. I like your style. You may be blamed for something I've done. I'm sorry about that, but it can't be helped. Blame for what you've done? I'm sorry, mister. I can't tell you anymore. Your name I is... I can't even tell you that. You spoke of the Bascom gang. But I was excited. I talked too much. Adios, mister. Hasta la vista. Uh, Nico. No, I'll go, Toto. As soon as she has a little lead, I think I'll follow. There was something familiar about her face. I've seen her. Or someone who looks like her somewhere. Girl, plenty afraid. She's terrified. I wonder if... Otto, I know why she looks familiar. She's in this vicinity for the same reason we are. Now listen carefully. I'm going to follow that girl. You wait half an hour, then you move out. Now, here's what you're to do. A large cabin of several rooms stood near the bank of the Rio Grande. The living room was brightly lighted. A grim-faced man stood watching while Jed Bascom went through the contents of a desk. Well, I guess I scared the crook away before he got anything in this desk. You sure of that, Bascom? You can't take no chances. I'm checking once more to make sure. Too bad you didn't drill the critter. Any idea who it was that tried to rob you? No. Jed, are you all right? Well, Martha, where you been? Dead, of course. Shooting woke me up. Yeah. yeah. I figured the safest thing was to stay in bed till I was sure it was over. Who was it? Lawman? Yeah, I reckon so. I suppose I could have been killed before you came in to see if I needed help, yeah, huh? I get this, Baskin. When we got married, I said you could go on with your smuggling for all of me, but not count on mixing me in any gunfights. The law catches up with you, yeah, that's your worry, not mine. Don't you forget it. I got it straight. And don't throw it up at me if I don't come shooting when I hear gunplay. What happened? Uh, there was a prowler in here at my desk. I heard him. But he must have heard the floorboards squeaking in time to duck out. Got away, huh? He didn't yeah. get nothing, ma'am. Don't matter if he did or not. It's a sign that he knows where to look for evidence against you polecats. Now, look here, Mrs. Bascom. Even if you're Jed's wife, you don't have the right I to I got the that... right to say what I like. If you don't like what I say, get out. Martha. That goes for you, too, Jed Bascom. Where's the girl? I don't know. I don't see her from one day to the next. 
You mean to say she slept through all that shooting? Maybe she's lying in bed like you did. I'll go see. While you're at it, find out how much longer she has to stay here with us. I will. I'm as tired of having her here as you are. Hey, you. Wake up. You I'm talking to. Wake up. Oh. Oh. What's the matter? Sit up. I want a few words with you. Oh, it's you, Mrs. Bascom. Where were you during the shooting? Shooting? You mean to say you didn't hear no gunfire? Gunfire? Oh, I thought I was dreaming. Is there something wrong? I don't know. But shooting? What was it all about? Needn't concern you. How's that ankle of yours? Oh, it's getting better, thank you. Yeah, it seems like it's been ailing a long time now. Oh, that a spill from a horse would hurt so. I'm sure I'll be able to travel in a couple of days. All right, then I'll count on that. I... I'm dreadfully sorry that I put you and your husband to so much inconvenience. I... Where do you figure on going when you leave here? I was on my way to El Paso when I fell from my horse. Yeah. Relatives there? Good friends, not relatives. Let's see. You, um, you didn't hear no shooting, huh? Well... There's something about you that strikes me odd. What do you mean? Seems like I've seen you somewhere. What relatives you got? None. Let me get the lamp going and have another look at your face. Oh, but I... But what? Would you like to be looked at? Well, I... That is, you I... You've bothered me ever since I first set eyes on you. There. Now look at me. That light hurts my eyes. You'll get used to it in a minute. Uh, draw your hair back from your face. Like, like this? Yeah, dead red, and I wish I could remember where I've seen a face like yours. You said you didn't have no relatives? None living. I'm sure I've never seen you before. You said your name was Wakefield, didn't you? Yes. First name? Jane. That don't sound familiar. I... Mrs. Bascom, I think Wait. I know... I know where you Just may have seen... Wait a minute, Jane Wakefield. Let me see what this means. Your riding clothes wet and mud soaked. How'd they get that way? Well, I... Tonight's the first rain we had since you come here. Well, yes, you see, I... You've been out of this house. Yeah. Yeah, there's mud on that window ledge. That's how you got back in. I... I know you'll think I'm... I'm crazy, Go but... Go on, talk, Miss Jane, and let me hear what your story is. You got such a bad ankle that you can hardly stand. But there's your riding clothes and your boots. You see, I... I knew you were anxious for me to leave, and I... I dressed and... Tried to leave. Mm -hmm. Fell in the mud and come back, eh? Yes. I fell in the mud and came back. Had those boots on. I thought your ankle was swelled so you couldn't get them on. Let me see that ankle. Wait. You'll be still. Let me have a look. Ah, just as I thought. No sign of a hurt ankle. Put your hands up, Martha Bascom. Ah. You got a gun, huh? And I use it. Now, I savvy. Now I know why you look familiar. It's your father. You got the same chin as he had. Your right name's Jane Watkins, and your old man was John Watkins, a lawman. That's right. And he was murdered. Do you know who killed him? I got notions. But I ain't saying. He was trying to run down a pack of smugglers. The pack was led by Jed Bascom. Yeah. Dad came here, and that's the last anyone saw of him. Alive. He was found dead, and it was made to look as if he'd fallen over a ravine on his horse. But I know different. I'm here to get the evidence that my dad was after when he died. You're a downright ambitious girl, aren't you? In case you're wondering about it, I'm the one who searched through Jed's desk tonight. And I'm the one he fired at in the dark. Well, now that you got the drop on me, what do you figure on doing? Shoot me and Jed and Squint will come here on the run. Don't shoot me and I'll tell Jed who you are. Yes. I know. You're in a bad spot. And you can't win. Now, if you'll take my advice, you'll just take up them clothes, put up that gun, and get out the window. Travel fast and keep going. You'll have a couple of minutes start, and if you pick the right horse, that'll be enough. I came here to get evidence against Jed Bascom. I'm not leaving without that evidence. Tell me some more. Maybe you know how you'll get it and get away with hey, it. Hey, Martha, open this door. Open it up. Tell him to go away. 
Ask your hands and drop that gun. The window. Good work, Squint. Watch her while I unlock the door. Come in, Sid. I got it covered, boss. All right, stand aside, Martha. Come on in, partner, and take a good look at the girl. Who's the masked man? Well, you... This masked man came to the door. He said he thought he knew who our visitor might be. How about it, mister? I was right, Baskin. This girl's name is Jane Watkins. Oh, you... You weren't hurt. You came here to get evidence on me, huh? That's what she was doing, Jed. It's a good thing I had Squid go around outside and cover her through the window. All right, Baskin. You know the truth. You've got me. Thanks to that masked man. Yes, Jane. Thanks to me. And for a little while, I liked your style. <laughs> well, go on. Who's going to be the one to shoot me? The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. When the Lone Ranger found that the daughter of a former government agent was trying to get evidence against the gang of smugglers who had murdered her father, he decided to aid the girl. His plan was a strange one. He went to Jed Bascom's house and identified Jane. So she's Jane Watkins, eh? Now what do you know about that? More than that, Jed. Her ankle isn't hurt at all. And what's more, she was the one that tried to search through your desk tonight. Well, this is all mighty interesting. Mighty interesting. All right. Why don't you shoot me? <laughs> Plenty of time for that. Boss, who is this masked hombre? Yes, stranger, who are you? If I wanted that known, I wouldn't be masked. Don't you think I've proved myself on your side? I guess so. Me and you have a lot to talk about, stranger. Yes, we have. I reckon you hack to join up with me, huh? Oh, I guess almost any man would be glad of the chance to join an outfit that's as powerful as yours, Bascom. If he didn't care about the law. <laughs> hey, good, good enough. I uh, like the way you wear them guns. Oh, Bascom, I want to talk to this girl. For what? I came here to find out a few things from her. That's the reason I've been trailing her. I want to find out about some friends of mine. I think she can give me the information. Go on, talk to her. Uh, alone. All right, we'll leave you. Well, one other thing. Have you a place to hold her prisoner? Uh, I don't know. Well, perhaps a cyclone cellar or... We got a cellar. There's no way of getting there except through the trap door. We can lock her there. Fine. Put her down there and I'll talk to her in a little while. Well, you... Come on. You're going down to the cellar. Stranger, yeah. how about taking off that mask? You're with friends now. I'm not yet sure I'm with friends. No. What'll it take to make you sure? I'll decide for myself when I know you better. Yeah. That was a trap door. Huh? Say, Squint, uh, you better go and put something over that window you busted, huh? Right, boss. I'll take care of it right away. Well, mister... Now we're alone, you and me. That's right, Baskin. Maybe we can come to some sort of an understanding, huh? Uh, just how big an outfit do you have? Big enough. How big? I got all the men I need. But uh, I can always use a man that's special. 
Like what you seem to be? What sort of working arrangement you got in mind? A percentage, if your business is big enough. Uh, maybe it could be worked out. You keep records, don't you? Maybe. I'll have to look them over. Now? Oh, not right now. I wouldn't expect you to show me your records until you trust me. I just wanted to be sure you're a good businessman. <laughs> you won't find none better. That's all I wanted to know for the time being. Now then, what about you? Huh? What about me? What can I count on in you? Where are you from? What have you done? And what in tarnation do you look like? There's plenty of time for that. I think I'll talk to the girl now. Suit yourself. Oh, where is that trap door? This way. All right. What do you uh, want to talk to her about? We're not partners yet, Baskin. My business is private. <laughs> Don't give out much information, do you? Do you like men who tell all they know? <laughs> you get the right answer for everything, eh? Well, here's the trap door. Good, open it up. Yeah. Uh, there's a couple of candles on the table at the foot of the stairs. You got matches? Yeah. You needn't waste your time. I shan't talk to you. Bascom, you can close the door. Right. Jane, he listen for a moment. You, you double crossing. I didn't tell him who you were until his wife had found out about you. I won't listen. Martha Bascom had you in a spot. You couldn't keep her covered forever, and you couldn't shoot her. She knew you were Jane Watkins. I shan't listen. You little fool, I'm here to help you. Don't you try to understand that? Fine, help you. What did you say? I want to help you. I'm here because you'll surely be killed. I stepped in when you were identified. Because from that moment you were marked for death. But how did you know? I heard the conversation between you and Martha. You heard it? Yes. When you left the cave, I gave some instructions to Toto, my Indian friend. Then I followed you. I was close to the window when Martha was talking. I heard what she said. Oh. I knew that nothing could be lost by telling Baskin who you were. Much might be gained. I won his confidence. He thinks I'm as crooked as he is. You, you were at the window of my room? I was at the window of the next room, the living room, until Martha went in to see you. Then I moved to your window. I listened a while, and I went to Baskin. I told him who you were, and I told him you were armed. Oh. He took no chances. He sent Squint to watch through the window while he rapped on the door. You you said you left instructions for your Indian friend. What did you mean? Tonto will be here in a few minutes. Our rescue depends on him. While the Lone Ranger talked to Jane, Jed Bascom discussed his plans with Squint. That hombre will be real handy for us, Squint. I already know of a couple of ways to make first-rate use of him. Nah. What's the matter? Stranger comes here, and you're all filled up with ideas as to how valuable he'll be. You don't even know what he looks like. What of it? What's the matter with me and the others that have been with you right along? <laughs> so that's what's rankling you, Squint, eh? Now, don't you get jealous. Why not? You wouldn't want the job I got in mind for him. What's more, I wouldn't want you to have that job. I figure you're too valuable to use the way I got in mind for the mass man. Huh? The same goes for the rest of the boys. What do you got in mind? The girl has got to be killed. We can't let her go free, can we? No. All right, then. She's got to meet up with trouble, be found dead. The law will be right anxious to get the one that killed her. Am I right? Sure you're right. Especially with her being the daughter of a lawman. Well? Just this. The law won't rest until they hang a man for the murder. Now, that's where the masked man comes in. What's the matter? You smell smoke? Hadn't noticed it. Now then, what's the matter with my scheme? The scheme being to fix it so the masked man is the one to hang, hmm? Sounds all right with me. It is all right. Now, do you see what the job is I got for him? You might have told me about it in the first place. <laughs> you doggone fool. Did you think I was going to let my own men down? Say, I do smell smoke. Something's burning. Seems to be over this way. Jed! Jed, the house is on fire! Look at that smoke. Flames! 
Father, what's done it? Get our things out of here. This house will go up like tinder. Water, get some water. Water won't help. Look at the start them flames have. We've got to get out of here. Those two in the cellar. Never mind them. Here, come with me, Squid. My clothes? What about my clothes? Take what you can carry. Get out, Martha. My clothes? My Here, Squid, give me a hand, will you? <coughs> Smoke's getting bad. Come on. My cash and my records. i got to get them out. The place is going fast. The roof will go down in a minute. <coughs> Here. Take what records are in the desk. Take this box, Squid. Yeah. Take it and then come this way. There's more that's got to be saved. Hurry it up. The smoke. It's getting me. Never mind the smoke. <laughs> Never mind it. Get over here. My secret hiding place. My eyes burn. Smoke. Yeah, this is it. This board in the wall. Grab a hold of it. Here, Squid. Yeah. Take a hold of it. You got it? Yeah, I got it. I got it. All right, now pull. Uh, uh, All right, throw it aside. That does it. Now take all these things. Here, Squid, hold out your arms. Here, get your money, get out. Get yourself out. We'll be all right. Hurry it up, boss. <laughs> take these bundles. We got to save them. I, I got them. All right, now save yourself. Get for the outside. <laughs> What's this mean? The door's fastened. Who done this? It's fastened from the outside. Open this door. Get this door open. <laughs> While the smoke billowed in dense clouds, the two men fought to get the door of the house open. They were blinded by the smoke and terrorized by the increasing roar of the flames that crept nearer all the time. Then a dominating voice rang out. Come this way. I'll show you how to get out the back way. I can't see. How'd you get out of the cellar? There's, of course. If you want to get out of this fire trap, come with me. I can't see you. Come on this way. Stop holding me. I can walk. Come on, then. You're all right. Just keep moving. The door's right ahead. Get through it and you'll be safe outside. Oh, this is it. We're all right now. My eyes are filled with smoke. Straight ahead, men. Your horses are there. Uh, who's the Indian? Uh, me, Tonto. Hey, there's a girl, too. Yes, I'm here, but no thanks to you. Take those bundles from them, Tonto. Uh, That's the go. evidence the law was. This law? What's that about the law? That's right. What do you think? You polecats have been hiding the evidence that was needed against your gang too cleverly. The law couldn't find it. It took a trick to get you. Uh, what's this about a trick? Ask him. The only way to make you show the records was to make you save them from the fire. You mean that... That Toto started this fire to smoke you all out. Hey, my gun is gone. Mine too. I took your guns while you were fighting your way through the smoke. You'll need no weapons in jail. Jail? You double-crossed us. Adios, kid. I've got to save my own neck. Get up! Get up! Woman woman escaped. Let her go, Toto. The law wants Bascom and evidence enough to convict him. Make a fast move, Bascom. Go ahead, just one fast move. Mama, put that gun down, put it down. Not on your life. I'm keeping you covered and hoping you'll make a play that'll give me an excuse to shoot you. That won't be necessary, Jane. Your father will be avenged by the hangman. Listen, mister. You too, Jane, listen to me. I didn't have no part in your father's death. The law will decide that. I'll help the law. I'll tell you where the rest of the Bascom gang is holed up. Uh, You'll have your chance to talk. Keep them covered, Toto. I'll ride into town and send the sheriff. Uh, You watch him. Steady, Silver, steady. Just a minute, mister. Uh, yes, Jane. I I think Tonto can keep those two covered. I I want to ride with you. I'll uh, make better time alone. But I... Oh, I misjudged you so. Your father made the same mistake, Jane. He once called me a crook. But we became good friends. He must have spoken of you. Please tell me your name. Your father didn't know my name, but he identified me by a silver bullet. A silver bullet? Easy, big fella, easy. Adios, Jane. Come on, Silver! A silver bullet? And a horse named Silver? He wasn't a crook. He's the Lone Ranger. A silver
This has been a presentation of otrwesterns.com, and we hope you enjoyed. Please take some time to like and rate our shows in your favorite podcast application. Follow us on Facebook by going to otrwesterns.com slash Facebook. Subscribe to our YouTube channel by going to otrwesterns.com slash YouTube. And send us an email, podcast at otrwesterns.com. You can call and leave us a voicemail, 707-986-8739. This episode is copyright under the attribution non-commercial share like copyright. For more information, go to otrwesterns.com slash copyright. Have a great day, and thanks for listening.